All right. So with that, I will call the meeting to order. It's uh, what? A little after six. I can't see the clock. Six oh five. Six oh eight. Okay. Uh, anybody recording? WCTV. Very good. I'm also recording. Thanks. For where am week. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the first item was. Cajonet Pond South Farm to Market Road, release of subdivision covenant and bond. This was a subdivision by AD Makepeace. Uh, they um, finally got around to finishing up the road. It was inspected by Charlie Rowley. And uh, it, Charlie can uh, repeat what he put in his letter, but uh, it um, uh, has been completed to the satisfaction of the plan that they had submitted. And uh, at this time, I'd like to uh, ask the board to release the covenant and bond. Um, we do not actually find any bond um, that was attached to this one, but uh, just to keep it clean, uh, if a uh, bond comes up, in the accounting, we'll have it released along with the covenant. Was the covenant in place of the bond? Or? Uh, well, no. Apparently, there was there was no, there was no bond that was um, that was issued for it. Mm -hmm. So I can interject here. Um, there was an amount of roughly memory serves me correctly, around $58,000 that uh, was put together as an estimate for certain work to be done. That goes back to around 2007, I believe. It was done, I think, by Beals and Thomas. But um, the number that I have um, gotten before on previous occasions was over $100,000, but I can't justify the 100000 as going all to Tyhone at Pond South. Um, I did take a visit up to uh, the project that's above that, and uh, that road has not been finished. So I'm not sure that there isn't some of that money that's um, in the accounting that uh, perhaps pertains to that also. So it's just a matter of how much should be released in, um, to the benefit of Tyhone at Pond South. That's the only question I had. And I think I iterated that in the letter. I had checked with uh, John Foster, a town accountant, on the um, on the listing of, of uh, performance bonds for uh, different projects, um, and there is 160,000 in uh, performance bond that has uh, been uh, submitted for um, some of the the, the uh, work around that area, but uh, nothing was was tied to Tyhonet Pond South. So, uh, Charlie, the Tyhone itself, the work was completed to your satisfaction? Yeah, everything was completed that was in the list that I had submitted. Um, and I made uh, two inspections and I provided the planning board with a letter recommending a release. But on that letter, or in the letter, I suggested that the amount of security that may be there for Tyhone at Pond South be released. I wasn't recommending that the 160,000 be released. I, I don't have any way of telling how much of it was devoted to tying up on South and how much might have been uh, set up for other purposes. That, that needs to be pretty uh, clear going forward, I think, in order to uh, avoid this kind of a situation. But that's where we are today on it. Did you say 160,000? Well, whatever the number was that Ken said he had. Yeah, uh, it's, it's approximately 160,000 that was put aside for a performance bond. Yeah, but it wasn't which, attached I, to the I, subdivision, which I think is a lot higher than what was, was uh, a set aside for Crane Landing, which uh, even with interest, I don't think it was that high, but that needs more uh, investigation, I think. Well, so we've, done, a, we've done quite a bit of investigation on it and gone through to the town accountant uh, doing the uh, review of the uh, accounts. And uh, there's nothing that, that ties the money that's, a, that's in under performance bonds to Tyone Pond South. 
So I guess we'd be looking to release the covenant then. Listen, Daddy. From what Ken was saying, there is no covenant because security was posted in its place. All the lots have been built upon. The only thing I can recommend is if you go back in the file, and this is where I uh, got the information when I got information through Beals and Thomas and also through uh, um, Joe Rapetti, that there was about $58,000 that was actually identified for certain work at Tyone at Pond South. That's their numbers. So that, that's the only thing that I can suggest would be a number that is tied to it in any way. So if you wanted to use that number, whatever that number is that's in there right now, uh, the 58,000 and change, whatever that number was, it's the only thing I can rec recommend to be used because Crane Landing has not been completed yet. There's only a base coat of mix there. Would it be worth creating an estimate for completion of Crane Landing and then assume the difference goes to Tyone itself? That would be an option. One possibility. I don't know if there's anything else left in town that they've done that um, is supposedly tied to all of the money that's in, in the file. I know at times at uh, Rosebrook Place, um, I believe they sent in money too, but I'm not sure whether it was kept separate. It, it should have it been. Was. If it wasn't, it, I don't know. It was kept separate and that, that's been tied to the uh, Rosebrook Place. Okay, so so the money that you've got there is has nothing to do with Rosebrook. So we can set that aside then? Yeah, the only thing that it was attached to was um, the 160,000 was uh, on Crane's Landing. And these projects were done almost at the same time. So if there was any error in creating a deposit, it, it, probably the most likely two would have been paired up. Well, then it certainly makes sense to look at Crane Landing and see what, what items may be left there. I know that the top course of mix is left. So there's a certain amount of money that can be delegated to that. If there are any other minor items, that could be checked also. Um, and once that's done, you could sort of pair out the amount of money that would be needed for that and release the rest of it back. So if, if the board wanted to consider that, uh, I'd certainly be willing to go out and make the inspection. Um, Ken, if you can pull the file on that, if you can find it and uh, see what you have for information, that would help in case there's stuff that's in these certificate of completion or um, of the requirements under the approval, under the certificate of approval um, that would uh, have to be looked at it would be something I could reference. <clears throat> well, I, I don't know if there's any other solution is to find out what goes where at this point. Uh, I think that's a good idea of yours, George, to um, I'll get the information out for Charlie. He can make the inspection and um, we can ask, we can maybe ask uh, for an estimate of remaining work as well on uh, Crane's Landing so we can take out the difference for Tyone Pond South. At least we'll know if we're in the ballpark with that 58,000 that was suggested. I'm pretty sure they spent a lot more on that uh, to uh, clean up everything that they needed to clean up there. So probably the 58,000 is going to be a lot less than what they've spent. But there may not be that much left at Crane Landing. So that's where we need to just check it out and see what's going on. So that sound like a plan? <laughs> Sounds good. Very good. Uh, what's the uh, next item we have? Can I get a vote on that, George? So authorize me to go do the inspection? Uh, sure. 
Um, are we looking for a motion to direct Charlie to generate a estimate on the remaining work at Crane Landing? So moved. Is there a second? Mike is muted. <laughs> You're fading in and out on mine, Charlie. I don't know. Can everybody else hear him okay? Yeah. No, he fades in and out. Yeah. Try to speak <clears throat> over into the mic. Did we lose Mike King? He went off the screen. I don't see him on the list. <coughs> Nor do I. There he is. Yeah, I lost my internet connection for a second. Oh. I'm, I'm back now. Was that a second? Is that what you said? Yes, that was a second. I said that word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. How much of the previous conversation did you get? Uh, did you hear the motion, Mike? I did. Yep. All right. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Was, was that in the affirmative, uh, Richard? Yes, sir. So no no objections, right? No negative. Very good. Thank you, George. So moved. All right, the next one is petition number 2320 for a definitive subdivision plan to TJP Realty LLC, 19 over Jordan Road, Wareham, Mass. For a two lot subdivision and improvement of an existing gravel way located at four and six Shell Lane, Wareham, Mass. This is at 20 lots 1041, 1042, and 1035D in the R60 zoning district. And who is here this evening to represent this? I am uh, Matt Costa for the record, Cape and Islands Engineering. Mm -hmm. This would, you is, like me, uh, would you like me to give a, a, a brief overview or? Yes, if you would, please. Um, would you like me to put the screen on the, uh, the plan on the screen? That, that'd be great. One more out. <laughs> Can you see the plans? Yes. All right. Um, thanks again, Matt Costa, um, Cape and Islands. We were in front of the board, gosh, I think it was a couple months ago now, um, under approval not required form A application uh, for these two lots. Um, the board uh, at that time, then reviewed the condition of Shell Lane and determined that it needed uh, improvements. So we have since uh, filed um, the Form B subdivision uh, application to make the improvements uh, to Shell Lane um, to gain the adequate uh, frontage uh, to uh, create these two lots. So um, I think most of you are familiar with the location of it. Um, the condition of the road is a graveled uh, road. It's uh, accessed off of Lydia's Island Road. And 
it meand it's pretty overgrown it meanders on through here and services a couple of houses out to the north um this road is not graded on a regular basis. If you drove in here, you could see the difference quickly between Lydia's Island Road, which is a gravel road also. Um, and that road is well maintained. Um, it has good um, slope to it. I believe it's crowned actually um, to uh, deal with the runoff. So it doesn't uh, pothole quickly. Um, and it's approximately about 12, 11, uh, 12 feet wide, it varies. Uh, and what we're proposing is to essentially bring uh, shell lane up to that, that level of uh, standard. Uh, we're, we're proposing eight inches of um, uh, processed gravel or dense grade. We did uh, the applicant, uh, excuse me, the prospective buyer of the lots actually reviewed with conservation. He's a contractor. He's actually going to be doing um, this work. And he reviewed with conservation the proposal to um, uh, essentially improve this road here. And conservation had a couple of requests, uh, which we incorporated in our design. Uh, the first request was that we don't use reclaim material. Um, so that's where we're being specific on the processed gravel or the crushed stone dense grade. Um, and the second request was that the, the road be pitched away from the wetland. So what we did was we, we super elevated the road. We tipped the entire road away from the wetland. Um, and you can see in this cross section here, um, the entire road has a slope to it and it's going to be uh, pitched away from the wetlands and we created some drainage swales along the side of the road to capture the runoff. Um, the soils over here are, are all uh, sandy soils and well drained. We have no um, concerns about runoff. Uh, we, in order to improve this road to increase that width and to add that additional gravel, uh, we do have to remove a couple of trees uh, in this particular area here. Uh, additionally, we are adding the um, drainage areas shown in brown here <clears throat> in areas in between the existing trees. Um, to, so as we're not coming in and doing a grand clearing of this entire uh, layout area, um, we, do, we are trying to minimize the amount of trees taken. Um, we are trying to improve the access to the lots and the drainage uh, for the roadway itself while maintaining that rural character. Um, so uh, in a nutshell, uh, that's what's being proposed. Um, the road, the gravel surface is being proposed at 12 feet wide. It'll match up with the existing grades on Lydia. Um, and then it's approximately about 380 feet long of area that's proposed to be improved uh, up to the property line where it will match up with the existing grade of shell lane itself. Uh, there is a limit of work that is shown along the edge of that roadway. And it's probably important to note that uh, what we're doing here is we're essentially adding the gravel to the ground surface. So we're not, we're, there's no need to cut away a lot of material and, and bring it in. Um, so there is minimal activity that will go on up against that limit of work area. Um, I know that ties into a letter that a, a butter sent in where they had a couple of questions. And I don't know if uh, now would be the time you would want me to to answer those questions for them? Or is that something that you would um, you would want to address later? Uh, if you have them available, we'll... Sure. Um, it was a Robert and Mary Dermondy. Um, I think I pronounced that correctly, H. Shell Lane. Um, and they had a, a few questions they emailed staff uh, and those were forwarded to us. Um, the first couple are pr have to do with conservation filing. They're asking uh, when would it be reviewed by conservation um, that it, we're going to be filing momentarily. So probably within a month or so, I would, I would think. 
uh, they'll get notified throughout that conservation filing process. Um, the compliance with the, they have questions about what's the process to be used to ensure compliance with the limit of work area shown on the plan. Um, the process is that we're just, it's a very minor uh, improvement that we're doing here. Uh, there's not a lot of cutting, it's just really placing of the material uh, and, and some general clearing. Um, so the process will be uh, good workmanship, similar to any other conservation uh, projects where you have a defined limit of work and you're not allowed to uh, work beyond that. Um, any equipment is needed on Shell Lane, uh, oh, excuse me, will any equipment need to access Shell Lane um, beyond the limit of work? Uh, there will be equipment on Shell Lane um, and we will only be improving the areas shown on the plan. Um, and can, uh, number question number six is, can a more natural seeding be used instead of hydro seed? Um, absolutely. Uh, you can, there's a variety of different mixes, uh, meadow mixes. It's a rather shady area. We would, pick, we would pick something with rise and fescues that would have a low um, water requirement, more drought tolerant species. Uh, could the swale, and then the uh, final question item, uh, question number seven is could the swale beginning at three plus 30 extend a few feet west to the property line to accommodate the new road surface? Um, I think what they're talking about is this area over here. And we specifically don't have that swale going to the property line. Uh, we need room to construct it and to stay on our property. And the uh, road will be pitched into it. So there is no need to actually have that swale run alongside that area. Um, so I believe that answers the uh, abutters questions. And I think I generally laid out what the proposal is here. Um, <clears throat> and I would be happy to answer uh, any other questions. Any questions from the board members? I have I have none at this time, uh, George. The abutters are on the call. I think we should give them an opportunity to. Did you get your questions answered? Uh, yes. Uh, so I'm Bob Dermody. This is my sister Mary, uh, and I just want to say thank you to the board. This process worked great. We sent you the info. You sent it to the engineer. We got all our answers. And thank you to Matt for just going down the list. Um, and I appreciate your comment on the last one. I wasn't sure that's why I put it in there about how the swale would work because uh, according to the profile drawing that you're showing there, it looks like we may wind up with a short distance of a low spot, right where your new work finishes and the existing road continues. And that's why I put that question in there. Yeah, the, the, with the elevated uh, road like that. Um, it's a little tricky um, to to see, but that road's going to be pitching towards that swale there. Okay. All right. Um, no, I think uh, I think you answered all our questions. Thank you for uh, doing that so thoroughly. I I believe when we did our site visit. Uh, we talked briefly about uh, road construction. And I think at that time we our standard mentioned was 16 feet, 12 inches of compacted gravel, 16 feet wide, uh, which is the standard we've used in the past. Uh, I know you do have some limits as to what you can construct in that tight location, but and if, if emergency services don't have any problem with it, I, I don't particularly. That's uh, mainly the reason for it is to get emergency vehicles in there. Yeah, and, and keeping in mind what we were doing also was to uh, match up with Lydia's Island Road. Um, and this is for a uh, service of, of these two lots here. Um, so there is not a long distance of, of this uh, 12 foot gravel road. I think that's also what we recommended if, if they constructed something to the standard of Lydia's Island, I think that was uh, 
the the only difference is the Lydia's Island's crowned, so that runoff runs to both shoulders. Ours is is elevated away from the wetland. Okay. Any questions from the board? We will oh. have to continue because uh, this is a definitive, so it would take four votes, correct? Just takes a majority, George, on uh, a definitive plan for a special permit would take four, but I think a definitive is just a simple majority. That's okay. my understanding as well. Okay. Did I lose, uh, did we lose Mike again? No, I'm here. Oh, okay. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> I just don't know where your picture went. Oh, I think I lost it when they uh, put the uh, map up. Any other questions, concerns? Just a question, if I may, George. Sure. Uh, Matt, are those two wide openings that you have there in your drainage swales for proposed driveways? Um, yes, uh, those are, are good driveway locations. Uh, would it would it make sense to put a connecting pipe between the swales then uh, underneath where the driveway would go so that they're sort of uh, interconnected in case one should fill up a little more than the other? Yeah, I mean, I've we've done that before in similar situations. I think, and you know, Charlie, I highly respect uh, your expertise and opinion here. You know that. Um, I think we have a very small area of roadway uh, surface uh, that's running into these swales and we have really good soils. So I, I would be hesitant at signing the applicant up for that additional expense if it wasn't necessary. I feel like we're pretty comfortable uh, with the ability for that road to drain well um, as is proposed, but I uh, I'll lean a lot towards your suggestion. No, I don't necessarily disagree with your take on it, Matt. Um, I was just asking the question mostly for um, to get a response and the board could consider. So I don't have a problem with what you've done. Thank you. I'm good with it as is. I agree. So can we approve tonight, George, after the public hearing is closed? Uh, is there any other information we need or is there a... I take it everyone's, all town agencies have given them, been given a chance to comment on this. I don't have any comments in the, uh, in the file. Mm -hmm. Well, if there's, uh, looks pretty cut and dry, I don't see why we can't uh, move forward. Does this plan uh, have a signature block or place like that on it? I'm only seeing your profile in, in the plan view of the roadway right now. Does the rest of the plan have that? I don't have, the plan I have doesn't depict the swales and stuff, like the one you have up there. So there's two sheets. There's the one I have uh, on the screen is the um, definitive subdivision. Mm -hmm. And then there's the road profile, which is the second sheet. Okay. This one, is there any notation on the plan to suggest that there's gonna be a covenant attached to this? I don't remember that but we can add that. Uh, you, you're gonna have to have a covenant unless you're going to actually uh, post security. So I would assume that you'd, the simplest way would be to start with a covenant and that should be noted on the definitive. Yeah, I can add that to the Mylar if that's what the applicant wants to, wants to do. Have you completed conservation review? We have not.
So any changes would be subject to um, to their recommendations, their order conditions would be subject to this approval. I mean, vice versa. This approval would depend on their order of conditions. There is a, there is a signature block on the copy of the plan that I have here. I, don't, I just have one sheet though. So it's proper procedure then to wait for the CONCOM to finish their work and before we uh, finalize? I don't think that's necessary. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let staff answer that. There are two separate permits and they're not, um, you can be, um, you can be accommodating, but it, it's not a requirement that you hold back on your decision based on a decision of another board. In fact, you can't do that uh, because of the potential for double jeopardy. Um, my, my recommendation would be that just a common uh, condition that uh, approval, uh, approvals and conditions set by other boards be included be, in the plan. Be made part of this approval. And yes, if there were major changes and to be subject to special, you say special permit would be subject to it. So conservation is going to hear this project under the Wetlands Protection Act and any of their own conservation bylaws. Um, none of this is pertaining to subdivision control. So they're, they're def decision is completely separate from from the planning board's decision. Well, insofar as they would they could condition the road construction and and, and the work done within the their jurisdiction could could change the road construction. That's yes, if they did require something that re, um, required a change, we would have to come back to you to seek approval of that change. I think we're all saying the same thing here, so. Yeah. I agreed. <laughs> Let's move forward. Yeah. So we would look for a motion to close. Is there any further public uh, input from anyone on, uh, on this call? Hearing none, I would look motion for- Motion to I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion made by Richard, seconded by Mike. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Thank you very much. Good evening. And we would look for another motion on the project itself. So I'll, I'll try to make the motion, George. I make a motion that uh, we approve the special permit or the definitive subdivision plan by PJP Realty for four and six shell lane, map 20 lots 1041, 1042, and 1035D, um, subject to their compliance with any other recommendations from any other uh, boards they go through. How'd I do? And, uh, in accordance with the plan, you don't see a plan B here. Oh, well, November 17th, 2020. Through today's. Any, uh, Mike, did, did, did you second that? I didn't catch no. that. Second. Yep, thanks. I did, uh, I guess that's, we've covered all the bases here. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'll stop in and sign at some point when you, is the mylar in the office or has it not been generated yet? We don't have a mylar in the office. Okay. <clears throat>
What's your next item there, Ken? Next item is petition number 2524, a special permit from the requirements of Article 3, Section 320, Table of Principal Use Regulations. Stephen A. Webby, care of attorney Jillian Morton of 184 Main Street, seeking to raise an existing abandoned single family structure and proposing to replace it with a new three family residential structure located at 5 Tyler Avenue, Wareham, Mass. This is map 15, lot 1030 in the MR 30 zoning district. This requires a special permit, which would be four out of five of the board members. Hi there, it's attorney Jillian Morton. Thank you, Mr. Brecklin. Um, we would request the continuance, but we would welcome any comments um, if the board uh, sees fit at this time um, regarding the project. Um, and I can go through a presentation if whoever, uh, anyone would like to hear about the property and what we're proposing there. Hey, Jillian, um, just to be clear, I've, I've read through the, the uh, paperwork and I want to just make sure I understand what's happening. Um, you're going to the ZBA for two variances, one on frontage and one on a uh, lot size um, and coming to the planning board because uh, this is a special permit planning in the use table of our zoning. It's not our zone. This is not a request for a variant of any kind or, or it's just that our rules say that a multifamily in this zoning has to come before this board for a special permit. That is correct. Um, a two family would be by right um, here in MR30, but we're a three family. Um, and I did double check um, with the commissioner and um, with the town regarding the two separate boards. We're meeting with the zoning board on Wednesday, um, but obviously the special permit is very important for what we're seeking. So we wanted to come here and see um, what questions or what different things you wanted to see in the project, um, or if there are certain concerns, we could kind of hear those first. And you've done some research to, to, to show that there's other properties that have been granted this special permit in, in the neighborhood? Um, absolutely, there are several other properties and there's also just the history in that area of multifamily properties. Um, the history on this property, if you can recall, um, was a single family home, um, but it did have many bedrooms. I think it was about eight bedrooms and then turned into a um, sober living house, um, which as we all know, um, was burnt by an arson. So this has been kind of an eyesore for the town um, with Cranberry Highway surrounding on one side and then on Tyler Avenue. Um, so our project would really be having the three units and this would be three bedrooms with two bathrooms in each unit um, with the parking and um, the, in all the materials that you've supplied, you can see kind of the rendering of what we're proposing with its own septic system. Um, so that's what we're looking to do. And we understand there's some challenges surrounding the special permit we're seeking and obviously the variances with the setbacks, which I'd have to discuss with ZBA. Um, but looking for uses for the property, obviously a rental. Um, and this, what I wanna clarify as, as well, cause there's been dis some discussion regarding affordable housing um, this is going to be subsidized housing. So it's not going to, I don't think it's going to count towards that affordable housing count of the town, but it is going to be subsidized. Um, these are, you know, we're trying to make them affordable for families. It's three bedrooms with the two bathrooms, like I said. Who is it subsidized by? Um, it's going to be like state subsidized, like a section eight, likely something like that, um, a voucher system likely. And if you like, I have a rendering in that in color. It might, I think it's in all the board members' materials. Um, but I could just share that so we could maybe take a look and whether um, Ms. Rally or has certain comments um, or other members that would that would help us, I think, in the process. Yes, um, a rendering of the uh, building and the particular yeah, unit. I have it in color. So if I share my screen or because uh, I think uh, Ken, if you do it online, it's going to be a black and white. Um, just to pull it up so you can take a look at a front elevation. Can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I did see a picture similar to that submitted. Yeah. Excuse me one minute. <laughs> Yeah. 
And how big is this uh, compared to the current um, footprint of the existing structure? Yeah, so on the site plan, um, you should be able to see the outline of the old building underneath it. Um, it is at least double the size, it could be um, double and a half maybe. Um, it is covering uh, quite a bit on the lot, uh, but that is to make it so it's the three bedroom, um, two bathrooms on each unit. Um, and on the site plan, you can also see the septic system that's going to be installed and that does not touch any of the wetlands over there um, as well. And there'll be three separate um, parking, uh, as you can see here, parking entrances with two spots per unit, which leads to parking tables. Could you put the plan viewed up that uh, shows that? The site plan, Ms. Riley? Yes, please. And I don't see that uploaded on the site. I don't know if Sonny didn't upload it. There is there is not a site plan on the uh, okay. on on our planning board website. <clears throat> Did you see the digitized version of the site plan? You should have it in the, I submitted eight packets. Um, so you should have the, I don't know if you have the hard copies, but I'm trying to find the electronic as well. I know Mr. Webby is also on the line. So perhaps if he has it. I don't seem to have it in electronic version, um, which I can certainly get to the board so that is uploaded. Um, but I don't know if you have the plans. So we have a, a big one that we submitted. Um, again, looking for it. Okay, so I'm not seeing an electronic copy, so I can get that after the meeting, of course, um, so everyone can review it. And um, you should have um, bigger plans that Sonia has, and in, in, if you have it in your packet, um, so you'd be able to see kind of the footprint and the layout as it relates to um, Tyler Ave and Cranberry Highway. I don't know why it's been uploaded. George, I'm looking at the, the documents that were submitted. The square footage lot um, differential is pretty substantial. Um, 
I think my question would be if we were if we were being asked to, to participate in helping this come to fruition, obviously with the help of the uh, zoning board of appeals, and they're they're specifically earmarking the residences to be Section Eight subsidized housing, would would there be any consideration or is there any consideration that those families be current residents of Wareham? Here's the plan, everyone, if you can see it. There's no requirement for Section 8 housing to be a, a local resident. Well, I know there's no requirement. I'm just asking, the, they're, they're asking for consideration of us to, to help them make this reality. Why wouldn't it be uh, on, why would it be unreasonable for us to ask them for some consideration back in helping to make sure that it was Wayham residents so that we're not adding to an already strained social services? If you agree with that idea, I think that's a, a great idea. Um, anyone who follows anything Wareham can see that it's a huge void right now. For anything rental-wise, the market, you know, as a real estate attorney myself, it's it's pretty wild out there for for people. They have they have um, you know vouchers or, or they have the rent ready to go, but there's just not rentals. There and there is no uh, deed restriction required for Section Eight. It, it, they could very easily be rented at market rate, also correct. That's correct. Um, all right. So is there uh, any other information you'd like to see prior to the uh, next hearing? Board members? <laughs> no, not for me, not at this time. <clears throat> It'd be nice to see how drainage would be handled on the driveways. Mm -hmm. Looks like it's all coming right down onto Tyler Avenue right now, Ken. The way the contours go. <clears throat> there was no drainage plan submitted, John? We did not submit a drainage plan, just the site plan. We have mm -hmm. a, a Title V plan, but. And I see you've you've your plan shows nitrogen uh, removal systems, microfast systems. That's right. Um, the developer is also that's uh, one of his specialties. So that it's um, he would be able to speak to the specific of, of the the, the is, sewer. Is that is that a requirement due to location or is what? Um, I am not sure on that. Um, Mr. Rubby could answer that. I know that it's um, is for the three families. What was on the Yes, that is a that is a requirement. Mm -hmm. Why is it a requirement? Excuse me. Why? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. I think the Board of Health says anything within five hundred feet of a resource area. Does that sound familiar? That does sound familiar. I believe it is. Uh, let's see. So our next meeting is the 25th. Would that be uh, okay with the applicant? Yep, that should work for us. Uh, okay. Yeah, we're here to hear the flavor of the board as far as the three family here. Um, like we had spoken about, we could have done a two family um, by right on this lot, not seeking the special permit, just looking for possible variances if necessary. But um, so obviously we have zoning this week as well to talk to the board and see their thoughts on the project. Um, so any feedback is welcomed. Um, so I hear about that you're looking for the drainage as a concern. Um, is there anything else that we can kind of take 
I see you know, um, the list of abutters. They have they been notified of your intent? That's right. When we applied, we did both planning and we and we did zoning, um, and they get uh, copies and it was published and um, they had um, certified letters sent out to them. Um, I haven't heard from any of them. Um, right next door is a single family, and then I know there is another um, uh, builder in town who lives in the, the other home near there. Um, who has kind of has a business out of that um, build as well. Um, and I know it's mostly residential. There's some two families, but the other uh, Cranberry Highway, it's all businesses on the other side. So um, we haven't heard anything really from the neighbors. Okay. And, and there, aside from uh, notifying them that of your intent to build three family home, are they also aware that your, your intent is to uh, solicit Section 8 applicants? I think that um, that's not something normally we would reach out to the abutters um, about, but it's all public on um, you know, on the website and posted. Um, we certainly hope that that wouldn't um, persuade anyone against um, this build. Um, they shouldn't. Uh, Section eight is those are those are families. Those are people who need homes, um, who need a rental, who might not qualify for buying their own home right now, um, and especially a free family as a mom myself, having little kids, you need those two extra bedrooms. So I'm just saying, I, I hear your concerns, absolutely. Um, but I hope that that wouldn't dissuade someone from having this build next to the property. Mm -hmm. okay. Just curious, um, I have, I have um, rental experience with Section 8 myself, and I'm just curious how much you were disclosing and how much you are. So my, just some feedback, Jillian, uh, from this is Richard. Um, uh, given the area, and it is it is uh, uh, half residential, half commercial, if you will, given the state of the current uh, building there, given the state of the rental property available, I look at this um, on the favorable side, just so you know. I think that... Um, the building does take up a lot of the lot. And, and to Michael's point, the the gap between the lot size requirement and the and what this is and the, the variance you're gonna be uh, asking for is, is a significant uh, number. So I'm anxious to see what the ZBA comes back with. Um, I'm anxious to see how the drainage will work. I think Charlie's right. Um, we need to understand that better, but all in all, I think there's potential here of something that would make the town a little better. Absolutely. And as you know, with the special permit we're looking at, is this uh, more substantially uh, detrimental to the neighborhood? And um, probably I wouldn't think of a better use for this lot um, housing for, and I, I love the idea of, of giving preference to Wareham residents who desperately need it. It's just a couple of comments. Absolutely. Uh, you've got three driveways coming out there. Uh, there's a substantial amount of paved area in the front. Uh, mm -hmm. There's no landscaping uh, shown at all, which is typically something that's done for site plan review. So that might be something to be considered. Uh, like Richard has already said, it's a substantial building taking up a fair amount of space. And now you've got a lot of impervious cover between it and Tyler Avenue. So it doesn't really lend itself to uh, uh, something that really is a soft scape or something that you would typically want to see in a residential neighborhood. So I'm just suggesting that maybe you could take a look at that. Um, when you say that you're, uh, Ms. Morton, you say that your public hearing before the ZBA is on Wednesday evening? It is. Um, we have that on Wednesday. Um, and that is for setback variants. Um, so this will be the first time that they're seeing this as well. So um, certainly welcome any comments you have to speak to the board members there about this project as well. Okay. Um, it's more than just for the setback, right? It's for two. If you look at the denial letter, um, the commissioner actually didn't mention anything about impervious um, coverage, which was my question as well, but it doesn't look like that was of concern. And it actually doesn't look like it's a, a, a full site plan review. It's just the special permit from the planning board. And we have two, um, the square footage, um, three family requires 7,500 square feet. And we have 
about 1900. Um, and then we have the setback as well. So um, those are the two variants that we're seeking from the ZBA. My, my only suggestion would, for the planning board will be if, if the CBA is hearing it for the first time on Wednesday, mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming that they might want to have further information, I'm not trying to speak for them. Yeah. Should they do that, um, my own thought would be to, before the planning board makes a final decision on the special permit, that you uh, continue the hearing until you actually get through the ZBA portion of it, because I believe it would not be appropriate to grant a special permit for something that the ZBA has not authorized through a variance process. Otherwise, you'd be giving a special permit on a non-conforming use. Um, absolutely, Charlie. I actually had that concern, you know, procedurally planning board versus ZBA. Um, the question being though, I, I thought I could take it all to the ZBA, but specifically in our bylaws, the special permit is for the planning board. So in my opinion, that you are, I'm seeking this special permit from the planning board to get this use, it's not a variance, it's a use special permit. And that once everything looks good to you to get it approved that um, we'll be going through that process with them as far as they might look at it and say, um, no, we, we don't want this three family there. So it, I had them go parallel um, and, but I do agree that there shouldn't be necessarily decision one or the other kind of working all together on the project. Um, but but you have the authority as a as a planning board be able to decide regarding the use of this property for the three family. I, I don't have a problem with uh, filing jointly. Okay. Uh, I'm just concerned that that the board allowed the ZBA process to go through so that there's no appeal so that when you actually have the decision with the planning board, you're actually um, allowing the decision on a legal lot or a legal use. If you okay. do it, if the decision with a special permit comes before the final decision is uh, cleared with the ZBA process, you'd be giving a special permit on a non-conforming use. Well, our bylaws do allow you to give this, give the, the planning board can give special permit on the three family. That's, that's why I went to the planning board for it. So, um, but I, I see what you're saying regarding the setbacks. Um, I'll definitely bring this and you're welcome to come to the hearing as well on Wednesday to discuss this kind of process, the duality of the planning board versus CBA. Um, so I'm just going with hoping everyone's input is in there and we're able to get to a plan that works for everyone in the town. Um, and if they get, we grant on those variances and um, if that's the process of how the town would like to see it with the variances get, getting granted and approved and blessed through the ZBA and then having the planning board, I'm, I'm all for that process. As part of the special permit findings, the, the planning board has to find that it's in conformance with the zoning bylaws. So it would be appropriate if the zoning board of appeals were to find the variances for the, the board, the planning board then make a finding that it's in conformance. Great, okay. Well, that would should give them direction to on Wednesday. Thank you for that, Charlie. Uh, on the parking area, is, would any um, consolidation be done? Would, would reduce the amount of pavement or? I think we had talked about um, possibly doing some um, crushed stone there. So it, depending on the impervious surface, um, to try to eliminate the amount of pavement, um, we need those two spots and then a way so you know, a person can back up. So it's not just a straightaway going in there. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I do see that concern regarding the amount of pavement. There's other impervious surfaces we could use um, to be able to make that um, not all a parking lot, basically. Mm -hmm. I think there's probably a way of consolidating some of that so that you're not looking at three separate driveways that are so close together mm -hmm. that there might be a, a way of putting uh, maybe not one, per, but perhaps two uh, and making the orientation of the parking a little bit different. This would be one thing if it was a, a lot that had a little bit more depth to it, but it doesn't. Um, so I, I just encourage taking a look at that and trying to be a little bit more creative in the way that that's laid out. Absolutely. So with that, I would look for a motion to continue the public hearing to 
Did they say January 28th? They said the 20th. 25th, sorry. Did, did you ask for any, uh, excuse me, uh, Chairman, have you asked for any public input yet? Uh, I hadn't at this time because we uh, okay. trying to keep the information down where we don't have a full member of a full board. Um, if there is somebody that uh, is seeking more information, I will uh, I'll accept that at this time for the um, yes, um, I'd like a little clarification on the project itself. Um, what's, what's the size of the lot there? Is this, uh, is this Jim Manese? Thank you. The, um, it's a little over 18,000 square feet. What's the minimum size for a duplex? Um, to 45,000 square feet. And then three is um, 75. Um, does this fall under section 820 at all of the zoning bylaws, multiple family? I, I don't have section 820 in front of me at the moment, but. Okay. Um, and are these going to be, and I think one of the members said they had some experience with, with the vouchers. Um, can a landlord turn a, um, an individual down uh, for rental, if they are a voucher, uh, if they have vouchers, or are they required to accept it by law? Yeah, they have to. They have to accept it. Um, thank you. So these are market rate rental units, which, if I think I'm correct, for Wareham at this point in time, is twenty nine hundred dollars a month. Um, I'm looking at the MRVP uh, mobile voucher maximum rents. And um, are these project-based vouchers? Would that be so that it's deed restricted or would these be mobile vouchers that you could accept or may not accept? Um, I would have to defer to my client regarding that. I don't know how deep he's gone into thinking about that. I, we spoke before about no deed restrictions though. Um, yeah, so uh, the reason I say that is it's still market based and you have to accept vouchers if a person's, if you think a person's qualified to live there. So it's, it's not truly affordable. You're just getting your funding partially, possibly partially through another source. Yeah, that's correct. Um, correct. So, um, we kind of spoke about that in the beginning, just regarding make clarification regarding whether it's affordable housing versus the subsidized, um, so that is the difference. Um, I know that there's definitely a need for that affordable housing also in town. Um, right. Wouldn't, uh, would be the subsidized at market. Yeah. So, so, yeah, this is my perspective. You're looking for a bonus on the, you're looking for a density bonus. Um, three bedrooms. So that, that really puts a lot of pressure on um, town resources. And um, I, I think it would be helpful if it was affordable and deed restricted affordability so that um, we're kind of keeping pace as develop, you know, as de developments move forward. And um, it's, it's like you're putting three houses where you really should only have one. And that's only because it's being grandfathered in because there was a house on the lot already. Otherwise, it would not be a buildable lot there, correct? Yes, it would. It would still exist as a lot and be buildable. Because it was by itself. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, for a single home? For at least a single home. Uh, right. So I just, you know, I, I just wanted to make these points clear. Um, you know, when we do this, we... We really tax the resources of the town and where there should be a get for the give. So if we're gonna give a density bonus, we should be getting something back in return. As in um, part, uh, part of that project being um, deed restricted affordable. Thank you.
Is there anyone else who wishes to comment? Hearing no one, I look for a motion to continue to the 25th. So moved. Is that Richard? No, that was Michael. Oh, okay. And <laughs> Richard's microphone is off, so he's not going to second. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, you. I seconded Michael's motion. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jillian. The next item is a discussion and possible vote on the proposed findings and recommendations for the Littleton Drive 40B comprehensive permit before the Zoning Board of Appeals. And we have the proponent uh, represented by Charlie Adams from Penrose, which has been working diligently and uh, and expertly at uh, making a great project and uh, like to have any comments from the planning board uh, regarding the, uh, the plan. Uh, I, I thought it would be appropriate for Charlie to, um, for Penrose and the team to uh, make a uh, presentation so the, so the planning board gets the uh, same information regarding the development proposal. Very good. Great, Th thank you very much, Ken, I appreciate that. Um, so I've got a number of folks, uh, we, ha we have a number of folks here with us today um, from both our, uh, for Penrose team, as well as our architecture team, our landscape architect and our civil engineer. Um, and uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to be here. As you know, we're going through the 40B process with the ZBA and really would love your feedback and input on, on the plan. Um, but what I thought we'd do is um, we'll do a, a quick presentation. I'll run through it pretty quickly uh, to give you a little bit of background on on who we are and how we got here. And then I'll turn over to the people that really um, can do the ex explaining of uh, this development, the, uh, the design team. So um, Ryan, do you mind, uh, if you don't mind, uh, Mr. Chairman, do you mind if we do a presentation uh, real quick? Great. <clears throat> Thanks, Ryan. So I'm going to go through this fairly quickly, and there'll be some stuff. Uh, we're sort of doing this, as Ken said, we're, we're working really hard. And we're doing this in real time. So I'm going to comment on a couple of images that uh, at a sort of a 30,000 foot level from a development perspective. And then our architects and engineers who are, are actually doing the, doing the, 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 you know, constantly refining them may have some other images they want to put up that are a little bit more refined from, from what we have here. So, um, uh, so essentially, uh, as you all you all know, the site will will we'll highlight it here in the presentation. It's at Fort Littleton Drive, just off of Swift Beach Road. Next slide, please. Uh, a little bit about who we are. So Penrose is a uh, owner manager developer of multifamily housing. Uh, we're in I think probably up to seventeen or eighteen states in the District of Columbia. Uh, we have a presence here in the New England area. Uh, I run the office here with uh, two of my colleagues that are on the phone, Ryan Kirikoff and Rio Sacchetti. Uh, we have another person with us and hopefully soon adding a fourth. Um, and so right now we're active in this area in um, uh, here in Massachusetts uh, and Connecticut. Uh, but over our 40 year history, uh, we've done uh, over 17,000 units. Uh, you can see here things by the numbers. Um, the, the biggest one is uh, that we've done uh, over two, nearly 270 developments. Uh, we do about 15 developments, new developments a year. And we're consistently ranked as one of the uh, largest affordable housing developers in the country. Next slide. Uh, even though I think we have a fairly large presence, we're a, a small sort of nimble company. Uh, we're, we're basically held by three principles that are actively involved in the day-to-day -day decisions of the company. Uh, and uh, even though we're active in those 20 states, we have offices in about six or seven of the cities that uh, of the uh, cities across uh, our um, portfolio. And what's also important is we have our own management company uh, that's affiliated and, uh, and they manage um, actually more than half our portfolio now, but uh, they manage uh, the vast majority of our portfolio and they'll manage the properties here in Massachusetts. Next slide. Uh, these are sort of our core values. I won't get into them. Uh, the critical one that is uh, most valuable is the collaboration, which is at the top. And that's really what we try to do in each of our developments, really collaborate with cities and towns on trying to come up with a shared vision of, of what the town would like to see or the city. Next slide. 
Uh, Penrose Management Company. Unfortunately, someone from our management company I don't think could join us. I didn't think I could see Jenny here. Um, perhaps she'll sneak in. Um, but um, they're uh, about 43, 35 years old. And, and like I said, they uh, manage uh, not quite all our portfolio, but the vast majority of it. And they're, the key for having the management company is they're involved from day one uh, in the design and development of the process and uh, an integral to how we uh, shape and, and design these facilities. Next slide. So uh, a little bit about our team. Uh, this is who we are. Uh, these are all folks we've worked with before and other uh, settings. Um, most recently, uh, our deal on the, uh, in East Ham, the Village at Gnostic Green, a number of these folks were involved there with us. Uh, and folks are also involved with us out in some work we're doing in Auburn. Next slide, please. A little bit about how we got here. I think you all know the background. This is actually a response to an RFP that, uh, that, the, that Wareham actually put out. It was put out through the Wareham Redevelopment Authority. Uh, and that was issued back at the beginning of the year. We were selected through a competitive pro process against a couple of other bidders. Uh, and have been moving forward with the WRA since that time. Next slide. A little bit about our progress to date. Uh, this is already outdated. Uh, as, as Ken said, we are trying to move really rapidly. So uh, we're always adding to this slide, but basically we have uh, have a development agreement uh, executed with the Wareham Redevelopment Authority. We've done a number of, um, a lot of uh, due diligence investigation of the site itself through surveys, geotech, uh, geotech testing, checking the ground monitor. Um, we've done preliminary plans and designs and we're continuing to refine those. Uh, we've done environmental work. We've met with the Zoning Board of Appeal a couple of times. We've done a traffic study. We've gotten a project eligibility letter from the state. We've actually submitted an app uh, and we will be submitting an application for tax credits uh, in late January. We've also had the opportunity that's not on the slide to meet with a number of the department heads working with Ken. We've had a chance to get feedback from both police and fire department on our plans. And we've actually already incorporated uh, those concepts uh, into the design. Next slide, which we'll talk a little bit about later. Okay, so uh, you're all very familiar with the site. It's Fort Littleton. It's the site of um, what was to be a subdivision back in the 70s. Uh, it's just off of Swift Beach Road. Next slide. Zeroing in a little bit, what you see on this drawing are the old uh, roads that were uh, to be laid out when that subdivision was originally planned. We are not using those roadways, which you'll see as we move through the slides. The, the, one of the key concepts that you'll see is we're actually using a lot less of the site, a tremendous, uh, um, a lower amount of the site than this subdivision planned. One of our key guiding principles and why we have our landscape folks here with us too is to really try to keep the site as preserved uh, and green as possible. Next slide. So uh, we originally submitted for 92 units and broke them up between non-age and senior. Um, we were able to do some revisions with both the state and the WRA to get a few more senior units and, um, and decrease the non-age restricted just by expanding uh, the senior building on the site, which you'll see and taking away one of the modules that we had for the non-age restricted units. We'll get into that. Next slide. Uh, so a little bit about the breakdown. It is a mixed income development. Uh, the senior uh, portion will be uh, all one bedrooms and that will actually be 100% what we call affordable up to 60% of the area median income. Uh, the other 49 will be distributed uh, amongst ones, twos, and threes, uh, which is consistent with uh, state funding priorities and requirements. And of those 49, uh, about 80% will be for folks uh, at 60% of very median income or below, and 10 are at what we call workforce units between 110 and 120% of the area median income. You can see uh, we're trying to keep a vast majority of the space open. 82% of the space is open, very minimal amount of parking and circulation coverage, very little ground coverage. And our goal is to try to actually get, uh, this came up, I, I know you were talking about this earlier, on one of your other cases this evening, uh, local priority for Wareham residents during the first year. Uh, that is uh, entirely something that's up to the state. It's a fair housing issue, uh, but we've been able to achieve that 70% preference um, in our other developments that we've uh, worked on here in the Commonwealth. So we're cautiously optimistic we'll be able to get the state to provide that uh, preference here as well for Wareham. Next slide. Uh, so this is the, the general concept of the site plan. You'll see uh, as the professionals get into it that there's been some changes and re revisions, but the overall concept has generally remained the same. The key guiding uh, principles here was to create uh, a village-like concept. 
uh, and to use uh, as little of the site as possible. So you can see we're really trying to uh, keep the site uh, as pristine as we can. We know that residents currently enjoy the site for walking. We're trying to maintain that ability. We're trying to allow residents to continue to use the site as they have now, but in a much more enhanced way, we'll be adding sidewalks uh, all the way up to uh, Swiss Beach Road through Littleton. Uh, those sidewalks will run throughout the site. We've clustered about, uh, I think it's 10 sort of townhome style uh, buildings around the green. Each one is four or five units that you'll see around the loop. In the center of the green is, um, um, what we, is a community building that we'll have. That's where we'll have a management office and a community space, which would be available both for the residents uh, of the site as well as the community at large. And then off to the right is the 44 unit senior building that we're uh, adding here as well. Uh, there'll be um, a, uh, we'll get into this a little bit though, the fire uh, department has asked for two uh, different uh, emergency means of ac access. Uh, one is at the lower end of the screen and um, we're, we've added another one up at the top, which our folks will get into. Next slide. Oh, uh, just to go back for a second here. Um, one thing where, uh, if you could go back for, if you don't mind, Ryan. Uh, and our folks at Horsley wouldn't can touch on this, but you see Flax Pond is off there to the left. Uh, we're staying out uh, uh, away from that. Um, uh, we're outside the 50 foot limit um, for that, trying to maintain uh, that that's a wetland area and to be uh, respectful of that and to continue to maintain that, hopefully as an amenity for the site um, and to clear out of that area for, uh, for building. So we won't be building in that area. Next slide. So this gives you a little bit of sense of what the site was like, but, or what it would have been like, um, you know, where things were fully built out. So we're, we're uh, excited that, you know, we could have done a lot more in terms of um, the size of the site, would have accommodated a lot more units, but that's not what we were trying to achieve here. That's not in, in uh, the best interest of the town to try to create something that, uh, that overwhelms the site. So uh, this sort of gives you a sense of how it overlays over what the previous subdivision would have looked like. Next slide. Okay, so I'll run through a couple of these. This is sort of some uh, the aerial views, some renderings. Uh, the senior building is off to just orient yourself is up at the top of the screen, obviously. Uh, that in the center is the community uh, building uh, or clubhouse. We should call it a clubhouse actually with a back uh, port patio. And then the non-age restricted units are clustered around in, in four or five units around the uh, edge of the site. Next slide. Oh, there's a playground and then the playground in the middle. Uh, this is a view of the entry into the site off directly in front of you would be the management office. So the first thing, uh, that's where our management folks will be. We'll have a full-time manager there. So there'll always be uh, during the work week, a presence on the site, eyes on the street. So they'll be able to see activity coming in and out of the site. Uh, we'll also have a full-time maintenance uh, person uh, for dedicated to the site as well. Next slide. Uh, getting in a little closer to the community uh, uh, clubhouse building. Um, uh, we try to design it to make it look like a nice small single family house to give it a nice feel. Next slide. This is the back of the clubhouse. So uh, what you see directly uh, inside the, well, inside the building there would be the community room. And so uh, where folks would gather and then that will uh, open up onto a, uh, a patio right directly off. So people to enjoy the common green in the center. Next slide. This is a view of the senior building. Um, I think our architects have done a great job here of trying to create a building that has some sense of um, artistic uh, uh, articulation. Um, it's not just one big box. You can see we've tried to vary the roof lines. Uh, they've staggered the building uh, back and forth uh, to make it appear much smaller. And so it just doesn't like one big monolithic uh, box. Next slide. Uh, these are the modules that'll be around. As I mentioned, each one will be four or five units. The key concept here is that there'll be zero level entry for all the units. So um, while not all the units will be fully handicap accessible, all the ground floor units will be fully visitable. Uh, and that's really important um, for, um, for the population that we're trying to serve here. We expect that the population here that will demand a lot of these units, a lot of the one bedrooms will be on the first floor, uh, would be a 55 kind of plus community. That's the what we're finding the vast majority of folks in our development in East Ham um, are, uh, are living in the one bedroom units. Next slide. Oh, uh, one other thing about these modules, uh, if you could just go back, that's another important design concept is everybody, each unit, you can't quite tell from this picture, but um, each unit will have its own individual entrance. So there'll be no shared common uh, hallways, no shared common entrances. Next slide. 
Uh, just another view of the aerial coming from a different angle. You can see the playground off to the top, the color. Next slide. Uh, these are just some of the highlighting the amenities that I've mentioned, the clubhouse, the, there'll be a, a community room in the senior building, central green path with walks and a playground, a community garden um, we'll have as well. And then um, sidewalks. And we've talked about maybe putting in a potentially putting in a bus stop on Swift Beach Road. There were the bus, the bus currently stops there now, but there's no actual uh, bus um, shelter. So uh, that'll be something we'd like to add uh, as an amenity for the community. Next slide. So uh, at this point, I thought I could turn it over to uh, our, our architecture folks at TAT, and they can get um, into the more nitty gritty of some of the design uh, concepts. Sure, thank you, Charlie. Hello, everyone. my name is Glenn Moots. I'm from the architectural team. Thank you for taking the time tonight to meet with us and talk about our project. We're very excited to be in front of the planning board and continue to work with the ZBA on moving our project forward. As Charlie alluded to, the project is a mix of a 44 unit senior building, which is three floors of type 3A construction. That is currently up on the screen right now. The main entry is located down here. Uh, coming into the building off of the drop off area, we will have a lobby, a social services office that opens up into a corridor. There'll be individual laundry on each floor. Immediately in front of the corridor is a additional community room that's gonna be designated for the senior occupants of the structure. On this floor, we have 12 one bedroom units, all with their own individual bathrooms, uh, living rooms, kitchens, that will then mirror on the floors above. On the upper floors, which we'll look at shortly, we have 16 units for the total of 44. On the ground floor here, we also have the maintenance and maintenance storage, which Charlie alluded to. There will be a full-time maintenance staff located on this project. And we also have a trash and compactor room and our electrical room for the building. We have two means of egress for stairs and we have two additional egress points out from going through the front or going off the rear where we will have a rear patio. Moving up, we have a second floor condition where we have two additional units. We're on the first floor, we had the lobby vestibule and we had the community room are now additional single bedroom units. And the third floor is a mirror condition of the floors below. Moving on to the individual 10 family units, we have a mix of four to five units per floor. I can zoom in on these. Uh, we have a type A, type B, and type C, which are a mix of, excuse me. And just just to just to clarify, just so there's no confusion, it's it's. Um, I think you said four or five units uh, per floor. It's like four, per, it's four building. Units per building. Thank you, Charlie. Yeah. Obviously, we have one bedroom units located on the floor on some of the floor plans, as well as a two bedroom flat here. Again, these units are all visitable on the first floor, with the second floor is having their own entry as well, which can be dictated by these arrows here, which bring you up to a second floor unit. This is the type A unit here. The type B has a, again, mirror condition of type A, but where this unit type varies is on the third floor. Instead of having two bedrooms, we have a third three bedroom configuration with an additional stair going up to a shed dormer configuration in the back, which puts an additional bathroom and bedroom on the third floor. And then the type C building is where we have our third floor flat. We have three bedrooms on the first floor and then we have two bedrooms on the upper floor, and this is our type C building. And this is a blow, blown up view of, no, of the individual senior building units that we have. We currently have three types of units, um, an S1, which is our primary unit, S2, and then our S3, which is located near the trash room. And these are the enlarged elevations. This is looking at the typical townhome. Again, what we were trying to do here was create a building that looked like a standalone single family home with five individual entries nestled in to provide direct entry to each unit. The architecture again is trying to go for a village style feel that complements the New England style clustered around a central greenway, having horizontal clapboard, vertical banding, 
very in asphalt shingles, which is very common seeing in New England style architecture. We tried relating this as we designed the senior building, which is a three story um, type 3A construction building, again, using horizontal clapboard material, uh, vertical bat, and cedar impression shingles throughout, again, with asphalt shingles, trying to have these structures relate to one another, even though this is a larger size, having a lot of ins and outs in the architecture, varying roof heights to create a very interesting building, but something that relates to the overall style and architecture of these single family homes. And then the community building, again, nestled in the front of the site as we come in, a standalone structure that will be the main meeting area and leasing office for this property. Again, composed of the same materiality, again, trying to have a similar color palette, very neutral and oriented towards the site. And if we go back to the overall site plan, having the main drive come in, we have the senior building at the front and a mirroring over the central island is the community building here with the 10 individual homes nestled around it. So this is where we currently are with the project. I am going to pass it off to our civil engineer who will talk a little bit about more about the current grading and how we are working with the fire department on some of those studies and analysis who will then turn it over to our landscape architect. We'll talk more about the central green area. Thank you. Great, thanks Glenn. I'm gonna share my screen now. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Great. My name is Joe Henderson. I work with Horsley Witten Group. Uh, we're the civil engineer on the project, as um, Charlie and Glenn had mentioned. And everyone should see a picture of the site plan. Uh, I'm going to give a brief overview of the our basic design approach, and then we can get back into the details if we need to uh, answer any questions that people have. But um, as everyone's mentioned, or Glenn mentioned, access is off Littleton Drive. Um, uh, we have a 24 foot wide entrance road. Um, all parking areas are uh, 24 foot aisles with nine by 18 foot parking spaces. Um, we do have um, handicapped spaces scattered throughout the development as required. Um, our stormwater design approach is uh, green infrastructure based. It's bioretention systems are being used for water quality treatment. And then for the larger storm events, we are using um, a combination of underground chambers and a large uh, infiltration basin. Uh, this site does have somewhat of a high water table. So we're trying to um, obviously balance that uh, in our design. We have a, um, so we have two outfalls, um, as you can see on the drawing. These actually have been revised since this, this ZBA uh, submittal. And they are now located completely outside of the, uh, the 50 foot buffer to the to Flax Pond. So we're maintaining a 50 foot no touch zone to, the, to Flax Pond. Um, this design, this drainage design does meet the stormwater management policy um, for all the standards that are required through the state. Uh, as far as other utilities, we are bringing gas and electric off Littleton Drive. Um, we've also, um, are proposing to um, install a gravity sewer collection system that would then in turn um, flow to a, a lift station, a wastewater lift station and pumped uh, through a, a force main out to the existing sewer in Littleton Drive, which then continues on into the, the town's collection system. Uh, we have been coordinating with, uh, as Charlie mentioned, the water department. We've made some changes already to the proposed utilities. Um, we're looking to provide a looped system and this looped system would, um, would eliminate a lot of the existing AC water main that's on the site. We put in brand new water main looping throughout our uh, proposed loop road here and then connecting back to um, the existing water system to the south. We also, um, as Charlie mentioned, we have met with conservation. We had one meeting with them. Um, we are planning to uh, go back um, on the 20th and we hope to present this revised plan to them also that will show all the, um, all the uh, work being outside that 50 foot buffer. 
We've also coordinated with the fire department. Um, we've been, as Charlie mentioned, we've added a emergency access at their request off the uh, west side of Littleton Drive. So there'll be a gravel gated access drive on the west side of Littleton Drive. We'll provide emergency access. We've also, um, in addition to that, we've provided an access road or drive to the rear of the senior building. So um, as they requested, they have access to the rear of the senior building. Uh, we're able to do this and also stay outside the 50 foot buffer zone to the uh, wetland. So I think that is all that I had. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Joe, just let me add one thing. The, uh, there was a, there's a second means of egress down at the bottom here as well. Correct, right. yes. We also have a second means of egress on the bottom. That is also For emergency a access. Emergency only, not, not emergency. a cut through, emergency only. Correct. Mish, did you want to uh, make a couple of comments on the landscaping? Sure. Um, Joe, can you stop sharing and then I'll, I'll pull the plan up? Sure thing. Um, I'll just, Charlie mentioned quite a bit already, um, but I just wanted to show um, on the outside of the property, you'll see a brown trail. And that is, um, some of this trail is actually on the existing roads right now. And then others will be new where we'll just do some minor clearing um, to create that walking trail that's always been there so that outside residents can still come and walk, uh, walk the perimeter and also residents around here. Um, we are really trying to limit the amount of disturbance, which is, which is tricky, um, but we are gonna try to keep the limit um, as close as we can to the backs of the, each of the townhouses um, so that they, we, don't disturb, um, we, keep, we can maintain the screening between uh, the neighbors and the new houses. Um, on the inside island, we are able to, uh, based on the grading, we're actually able to retain a lot of the existing trees there. So on this plan in the center there where all, there's all those darker green are all existing pines that we will be able to keep on the site and we will then have these pathways be able to go through there. We'll still, we'll still do some clearing below so you can um, see through there. So it won't, be, um, it won't be dense vegetation, but there'll just be trees so that um, the townhouses are screened from each other and it's more like a, a park-like a park setting in between. It's a pretty large area inside here. Um, we're showing the pink are just a bollard light that so these paths will be lit through there. They won't be pink, they'll be, um, but just to show a difference, the uh, yellow lights are then more of the, a, a taller post light for uh, parking and street lights. Um, we are uh, proposing like some areas where there's going to be these infil infiltration. Um, where there's gonna be some larger lawn areas. So there could be some you know, passive and active uh, recreation, not active to the point of you know, soccer. We're not suggesting that, but just open areas for people to um, enjoy this as more of a park-like space. Um, we'll be planting the uh, different rain gardens uh, throughout the site with um, native seeding, um, which will be an amenity to the site. So those won't be lawn areas, but they'll be um, sort of wildflowers. And it, so it'll be, I think, very uh, pretty. And we'll be walking through those areas. Um, the pathways will go through there. Um, we are proposing a community garden down at the bottom part of the page is where they'll be some community gardening plots that you can have. Um, those will be fenced in so the deer can't get in there. Um, and then just general walking paths uh, throughout the property. Um, we will be planting uh, some shrub plantings in the front. So um, those that's not really shown right now. It's just really the trees, but we will um, have uh, shrub plantings in front of the houses so they feel more like home. 
I think that's great. Important. Super. Um, so I think we're open to, to uh, obviously questions, uh, comments. We'd love your feedback. I think while we're doing that, Joe, why don't we go, why don't we hand it back to Joe and probably put up the um, Joe's um, site plan because that's probably the most current, right? That we've, that's what we're working off of right now, I think. Even though it's not the prettiest with the color, it's the. Uh, that, the one I had is about the same as Joe's. Is it? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to take that off. No, it's okay. This is the site plan that was submitted to the ZBA. Right. I just I was thinking about the um, yeah the fire the fire truck uh, road behind, so that people saw yeah. that. But this this one works too because you could yeah. Oh, there works. we go. Okay. Excellent. Perfect. Latest and greatest, right here. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Great. So the other egresses are, are for emergency only. They're not going to. Take any of the pressure off of uh, Swift Beach Road or your connecting road. No, it'll the the um, to keep to, to keep this neighborhood you know quiet. Um, we'll have just the, um, the the those will be emergency uh, means of egress, and there'll be the entry will be off of Swift Beach Road into the development. What is the access to that southernmost uh, emergency? Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, when, when you say the accident, we'll, we'll, we'll put up a gate there um, that the fire department would have the, oh, you're trying to see where it is on the map? Yeah, so if you mean it, it goes to, um, was it Nicolet Drive? Yeah, uh, um, Nic Nicholas, uh, Nicholas Drive? Nicholas, yep. Goes out the back to Nicholas Drive. So. That, that I believe was already um, envisioned when the subdivision was going to be created. So I think we're just picking up on that connection, but the only time it would ever be used is if there's, uh, you know, fire or police needed to come through there because the other ways were blocked. So, but it won't be traveled. Is there any other connectivity for the walking trails to go off site? We um, have been trying to um, think about the walking trails to recreate what's already there. I don't believe there are, there are trails into the site from, um, from other places in the neighborhood. Um, that's something that, that's of interest. I mean, we didn't, we didn't, we wanted to try to, you know, respect the, the other neighborhood, um, the folks on the outside and, you know, not, and, and try to keep the development, you know, the distance between our, our development and theirs as much as possible. Um, but that's something we could look at to try to find other ways to connect. Um, in terms of, and we are doing, not exactly answering your question with respect to the trails, but we are going to put a sidewalk in on um, uh, to connect to Swiss Beach Road over there. Mm -hmm. We'll have a sidewalk, which is not there now. No, there's no sidewalk on Swiss Beach Road at that point, though, right? Uh, I believe there is a sidewalk on Swiss Beach Road. Am I, am I mistaken? Maybe not. The, the, what we were really thinking about was creating a path for people to get out to Swiss Beach Road because across the street, actually, if you go to the Google map. Yeah, I can take a look at the map. Yeah, so if you, so right, right there. Oh. There's a sidewalk on the, uh, the opposite side of the street. Yeah, so stop right, if you could stop right there. So where the, where the cursor is right, right now, that's where the bus, the, the current bus stops. Mm -hmm. Actually, you can see the you can see the bus coming. <laughs> Actually, I think that's a school bus. School no, the bus, uh, yeah. the um, I forget what's. Um, sorry, folks, remind me the name of your of your local Gatra. bus. Thank you, Gatra. Um, it stops right there. It's like a flex stop or whatever. But there's no uh, no, no bus shelter. Um, we we um, we have made uh, contact with the folks that own that site and, and had some preliminary conversations with them about um, taking some land there to put the bus shelter. So the idea is you'd have the sidewalk that would come out to Swiss, to, to Swiss Beach Road, then you'd have, you know, you'd have cross over for the bus stop to connect you into the downtown area where the stop and shop is and the other um, uh, shopping activities are in your main downtown area. I think one thing to point out is that the uh, Swiss Beach Road and, um, and Route 6 intersection is going to have a traffic light installed. It's a project by the, uh, the Department of Transportation of the state. It's a state project and it's uh, due in uh, 2024.
<laughs> Which is 2026 in real time. <laughs> and what are you looking for this evening, uh, Ken? Are you looking for signage? Is that what I heard you say? No, any um, uh, recommendations that you have on the uh, on the project that the Zoning Board of Appeals should consider when they uh, issue the comprehensive permit? <laughs> and, you know, and just and any kind of general feedback for us would be welcome as well. We're trying to get input from lots of different groups. You can say you like it if you want. <laughs> well, this, this is this is Richard. I have to uh, kind of take a back seat here. As everyone knows, I am on the WRA. I've been working with Penrose for since the onset on this project. So obviously, I am biased towards it. So I won't uh, burden the planning board with any of any uh, of my thoughts. Judge, I have a couple of comments on a couple of questions, if I could. Sure. Um, first one, I'll, I'll go backwards from the ones I wrote down. Um, if you're connecting to uh, potentially the sidewalk on the opposite side of Swiss Beach Road, uh, surely there should be a crosswalk identified there. And sure. Um, you need to take a look at whatever handicapped access might have to be adjusted in that existing sidewalk, as well as um, what you might be putting in on Littleton Drive in the connection there. No, that's a good point. Um, okay. Definitely, I was as I was looking at that picture, I was thinking about that exact exact same point about trying to put a crosswalk there. We also, as part, of, we'll also be putting a stop line at the end. Where there's so if you look go to Speed Swiss Beach Road now, there's no stop line there. Yep. Uh, I don't even think there's a stop sign, so we'll be putting in both a stop sign and a stop line at the at the at that intersection as well. And if I could go back to the uh, architecturals for a moment, uh, sure. the, senior, the senior housing building is three floors, correct? Correct. Are there any elevators? There are two elevators, so we always try to put in two elevators for you know because if obviously if one breaks down, we want to be able to have people not trapped on their floor. And then what we'll also do is we'll put uh, one of the elevators on a generator. So in the event that there's a power outage that um, there'd also be a working elevator at the same time. Okay. Uh, and on the community building or the community room that is in the elderly housing building, how many people would that occupy uh, at any one time? The one that's in the senior building itself? Yes. Question? Glenn, that's a good question. Do you know the answer to that, Glenn? That comes down to a occupancy load. So it'd be based off the IBC's occupancy load. I'd have to open up um, the drawing. Give me one second if you could. It's, if, it, it's really more sort of a lounge than sort of a, you know, than, a, than I would call it a community room um, no, where people to, to hang out. If yeah. the majority of the seniors wanted to get together and not go out in inclement weather, to go to that community building and they could stay in their own building, but if it can only allow a certain number of people, um, how effective would that be? And while he's uh, checking on that, one other thing with respect to the building itself, um, that elderly building to me, even though the, the facade is staggered in terms of the um, setbacks, when you look at the building itself, the walls are still very plain. Um, I'm thinking about some of the older three-story buildings that you'll see, the architectural uh, details of those buildings. And architects in those buildings used to um, create a differential between floors by changing the pediments above the windows so that each one was a little bit different. And if you were to add shutters to the sides of those windows, it would add a little bit of uh, uh, something other than a plain wall with very, very flat windows, because I assume that you're not going to have uh, significant uh, wooden trim around each window that they're going to be just a standard run of the mill window that you can buy in bulk. So anything that you could do to offset that look would actually improve the looks of the building immensely. 
Oh, I appreciate those comments. Joe, if possible, could you uh, stop sharing your screen? I wanted to put up the elevations in question. To answer your first question, the senior building would be the community room per IBC would be able to have 46 occupants in it at one time at around 700 square feet. Oh. Which 44 individuals, again, they may have visitors or people coming from the family homes, but again, the 46 individuals in that room at one time is significant. Plus there is the exterior patio on the back where on warm weather days, individuals might find themselves on there too to offset that load. Um, that's something we, you know, typically if there is a load that we want to make sure is met, we put a sign on the front of the door that says, you know, max occupancy load is X to ensure that we don't oversee any fire requirements or code requirements. Um, one of the other questions, which is about the exterior design is looking at the elevation. Sometimes it is, they do look flat. Um, we currently are showing some trim around the windows, um, the windows themselves to give them some more of that New England feel. If I can zoom in. Now my screen is purple. We also have some trim work at the corners um, and some cornices built up as well at particular points in the elevation to give it a more depth and feel than being a completely extruded facade. Uh, but by looking at the elevations, sometimes they do seem flat. But if we open up the renderings, That's a good look for the building. <laughs> real uh, conversation piece. <clears throat> there is more depth in there. We don't believe we have a view of the main community room. That's something we can do an additional view and provide as well. Yeah, I think anything that can be done to sort of soften the look a little bit, I realize with all the grays and, and you're looking at windows that don't, they won't look like that in the real real world. They'll be dark, except when the lights come on. But uh, anything that could be done to uh, enhance some of the outside detailing of the windows <laughs> themselves, I think will go a long ways. Um, the only other comment I had, it will be a positive one, I think. <laughs> um, I'm glad that you introduced the secondary access uh, to Littleton Drive on the north side. Um, I actually looked at that um, early on, and I think that's a good thing to do. Uh, the only thing I would question on the southerly one would be whether or not, um, I don't know the status of Nicholas right now, whether that's a private way, whether it's a public way. If it's a private way as a part of the subdivision that's there, um, you might want to check on whether or not you would have the rights even to use that as an access. Yeah, that would be Charlie. I think for just the um, emergency vehicle use, but that's a that's a good question. Understood, but still, yeah. um, you know, they it's a private way. They have a right to say who can go in and out. Um, yeah, um, would be a good thing to at least verify that. Make sure that there aren't any issues there. Yeah, we'll check. What we, I believe that I believe we've we've talked with that one with our attorney, and I think he has said that. And emergency vehicles can go over in, because it's an emergency situation. You are correct in that, Charlie. Uh, for emergency purposes, they have the right to transverse onto any road um, to stop for an emergency. We would not be able to, if that is a private road, we would not be able to allow any of our residents or residents of that private road to go onto our site. But if it is private or public, uh, the fire department or any emergency personnel has the right to use that road um, to serve any resident or individual at need. Will, will there be any construction activity beyond the property boundary to make that connection? Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's probably right up to the property line, I would think. Yeah. Again, it's just a detail that you should look at at least. Yeah, I, thank I'm you. I'm doing the plan review, so this is the only time I get to shout. <laughs> <laughs> Good question, Charlie, thank you. Anybody else have any thoughts or comments on our concept? The um, what's the anticipated uh, vehicle load for for Speech Road? Um, 
I don't think our traffic uh, engineer could make this call, did he? Um, no, unfortunately not. Well, so I can, I can, I'll, I'll try to say something so I don't sound stupid, but um, the, our traffic study showed that they will not change the level of service at that intersection. Um, and I believe that the peak traffic um, loads at that time are like in the twenties or low thirties. That's the peak load of the morning um, hours. So it does not change the level of service at that intersection. And I, I know you went through the, the, the numbers as far as what's deemed affordable. Is there a net pickup for, for the affordable housing count for the town? What's the net pickup? Yeah, the 100% 100 of the units will count towards your SHI. So, and you're having your earlier discussions about, you know, Deed, deed restricted units. So all, all 93 units will count towards your 10%. So this project, I think you're at um, about 7.7%. This project will bring you up to 8.6%. Okay, thank you. With Woodland Cove, it'll be up over at 10%. Say that again, Ken? With Woodland Cove on Redbrook Road, it'll be over 10% uh, total. That'll put, that'll put us over the top? Yeah. Right. Just a question, when did they do the traffic study for Swiss Beach Road? About a month ago. Okay, did they take into account the fact that Swiss Beach probably doubles in terms of the number of motor vehicles during the summer months? Yeah, we talked We talked about that at the, at the ZBA meeting. Um, so um, there was some discussion about that. I don't, um, I don't think they're required to do to do that into account over the entire course of the year, but there was some discussion about that. Yeah, but that would certainly have an impact on the uh, amount of turning movements and the impact from one road to the other during that time. Whether they're required to do it or not, it's a, it's a reality. Yeah. There would be 33 vehicle trips expected during the weekday morning peak hour and 42 vehicle trips expected during the weekday evening peak hour. All, all intersections will will operate at a level of service C or better. So we're not we're not looking for any type of a vote tonight, correct, Ken? Uh, it would be nice if you could uh, get some uh, input to the uh, Board of Appeals if there's something that strikes you now. If there's nothing that uh, uh, that grabs you that you think the Zoning Board of Appeals needs to know from the Planning Board, then you can think about it and uh, get your comments in. And uh, if you email them to me, I'll pass them on to the Board of Appeals. Yeah, okay. I just, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big project with a lot of impact. I, I wouldn't feel comfortable making any kind of a definitive um, stand on it tonight with people missing from the board. Well, one of the things you can do is recommend where the, uh, they should pay uh, special attention to uh, the design or the uh, impacts, such as groundwater or traffic, and uh, <coughs> uh, where you think the, the sensitivities are. Right, which th that's what we've been discussing right now but we're not getting the input from Mike or from um, Russell. Right. You know, overall, I, I, this is probably the best 40B I've seen presented to us yet. But I, again, I, I wouldn't be looking to commit to anything without those two people involved. I mean, they've got as much say about what goes on on this board as anybody else. So yeah, I think, I, sorry, I was, in terms of, in terms of 40B, um, thank you, appreciate, appreciate that. I think, you know, one, one thing we've always looked at this project is, is, is that, you know, the, th this was an RFP that the town wanted and we put something together that we thought made sense. The 40B is really just a vehicle for getting it through. Um, and so, you know, we're not trying to crowd as sort of, I think to your point, and I think probably why you're, 
like it, uh, if I could fill in the blanks, is that you know we're not trying to put a, a gazillion units on a site. We're trying to do something that, that's respectful for the, you know, it's a 16 acre site. It's a huge site, um, and so you know, 93 units on on 16 acres is not a not a big a big number when you're talking about you know this this type of um, you, you know development. So that's really what we try to do. We try not to to we try to do something that's sensitive to the context in which the neighbors in which we work. So. Yeah. Well, wow, that's probably one of the reasons why I like it. We we try. We try to do stuff with people, not against people. Yeah. To put it in context, Woodland Cove is 150 units on seven acres. Yeah, I know. I, like I said, I, I think personally for me, my, my only, and it's not even really a concern, it's my, my only thought was just the, the demand on the road. Yeah. You know that it's it's not a big road. It's small. You, you got um, already got some travel on it. Small houses, which obviously means families and small children. And that would be the only thing that would jump to mind to me. I'm not going to call it a concern, but just jump yeah. to mind. Well, that, that's why I think it's important that we're going to you know we're going to improve that road. I mean, it's you know with um, you know putting the stop line, putting the trap, putting the stop sign, putting in a sidewalk there. To start to create it, making more of a of a of a roadway than it is now, um, so that it, it can be a safe place for people to to drive and to walk on. In the original Littleton Drive uh, subdivision, was there another egress to Swiss Beach Road? Or? They, they, uh, the road went out to Nichols and uh, connected on that uh, on that other side, on the southern side. There wasn't nothing be, you know, I was first looking for con connectivity, but I could see where it, it would not be uh, advantageous in this situation, but. Yeah, it, it would, it, it would totally change the, the concept that we're trying to achieve here. And, um, and one of the things in particular, the, the residents of Nichols, that's been their number one sort of issue of concern that, you know, that there not be traffic that goes through there. So we're trying to be really respectful of that. So it works, it works well for everyone to not have it. But I, I thought there was another uh, paper street going to Littleton from Swiss Beach Road, at least one, maybe two, but. Not originally, George. No? That original subdivision plan, which was up on your screen earlier tonight, mm -hmm. that was it. I thought there was one across from like Marsh Road or. Not that I recall. Mm hmm uh, you know, off, it, it looks uh, it looks good, but uh, I would like to get the input from the entire board, as Mike has mentioned. It does look like a nice plan. Great, thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to uh, from us, Ken? Uh, that's that's good for now. Uh, I'll. Um... Get in contact with uh, Russell and uh, Mike and uh, Mike Baptiste and see uh, what uh, if they're going to participate in uh, directly or uh, want to submit some comments uh, on their own. Mm -hmm. And and since uh, there are two board members that couldn't be here, you know, we couldn't meet as a board, obviously. But you know, I'm happy. You know, we're happy to talk with one or both of them. You know, in a meeting, if that's uh, you know, to sh to walk them through uh, through the plans as well. Do you, do you have any other sites with three-story senior housing? With three-story senior housing, uh, well, mo most of the senior stuff we do is four-story. Um, so we're we're again we're trying to we we try to build the con into the context of the neighborhood in which we're working here, and four stories wouldn't make sense for this location. So usually it's four stories because that's much more efficient. But you know we're we're trying to trying to trying to bend it and make it work financially, make it financially feasible at three stories. Are these slab on grade? Correct. They have yep. foundations. Yeah, everything's, it's all slab on grade, correct. Okay. No, well, very good. Thank you for the presentation. Great, well, thank you. We appreciate your uh, feedback and we appreciate your time. Very good. The last item on the agenda is a staff report. Bye.
Bye, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you. Again, thank you very much thank you for that yep. presentation. Uh, good to see it. Good. I'm happy to do it. Thank you. Floor is yours, Ken. All right. Um, a couple of things on projects. Uh, the, um, the the three units in front of Walmart on Toby Road and uh, Cranberry Highway. Uh, are going to be um, uh, in in construction and uh, permitting. Uh, right now, a, uh, the proposal is a Chipotle restaurant on the third pad, and uh, the uh, the construction will will uh, continue on the first on the Aspen Dental and the uh, uh, Starbucks Coffee uh, site uh, areas. Uh, with uh, some temporary uh, 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 installations for parking so that they can uh, get the stores open. Um, that's going to require a performance bond for the remaining work if the uh, board is amenable to that. But we expect the uh, Chipotle restaurant uh, application to come in within the next month. Um, do we have any standing with performance bond on private property? Yes, uh, zoning bylaw says you can uh, 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 request a performance bond for uh, site work as uh, part of the site plan review approval. Okay. And the third building is, are they coming before us for a they have to come in for a modification of the special permit to uh, for a site plan review. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, this is going to have a, a drive up as well too. So they're going to have to uh, get uh, uh, relief from uh, zoning somehow. Well, I apologize for not seeing that pre-construction uh, meeting. I got my days mixed up. Uh, is there any tenant for the other half of the Starbucks location? None that's been identified, no. Okay. On another uh, project, um, Bay Point or Windward Pines. Um, in the phase two and three uh, section of the subdivision, uh, they've sold or they have commitments for uh, 11 units. So they're moving ahead pretty quickly on, on that as, uh, as part of their uh, development concept that they want to proceed with, which has changed. Uh, they no longer have the, uh, the spur road extending to the uh, uh, northwest and uh, uh, off of the loop road on the, uh, on the uh, uh, extension of the uh, subdivision road. Uh, so they're going to have to come back in for a, a modification of the special permit and uh, subdivision plan. Um, at the uh, at the near future as well, within the next uh, six weeks, an application should come in for the phase four. That's the uh, the uh, CETA property, this, the, the seven and a half acres of land where they're proposing to put uh, townhouse units and uh, uh, as, a, as a, uh, a process of getting the entitlements before they purchase the uh, land from the town. So you can, you'll, see an amount, you'll see a modification of the subdivision for phase two and three and the site plan review and uh, an application for the townhouse units in the, uh, the next uh, four to six weeks. They're going to apply for both at once? That was my recommendation so that you could see it all together as one project. And uh, uh, I don't know though, if they'll do that. They uh, typically, uh, uh, Stone Street typically goes one permit at a time. And then blames us for their delay. <laughs> 
can, you might remind them that if they're going to go through with phase four, that that includes a modification of the subdivision for phase one as well. If you remember the, the intersection coming in from uh, Onset Avenue is going to take a different relocation. Right. Yeah, they're, they're going to be uh, including that as part of the uh, application. Remind Tim that it's a full set of plans we'll want to look at too. Not just a little picture on an eight and a half by 11. It's 11 by 17, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's what I got. All right. Anything further this evening? Um. Um, I saw a note from Dave Requina regarding, um, oh, help me. Um, I can't think of his name. The lot out of compliance. Fleming? Yeah, the Fleming property. Um, I saw a note from the Dave. He had written a letter saying um, there were some things in, in compliance and there were some other things that were not. And I, if I remember right, he was... He was working with uh, Mr. Clemmy to uh, resolve those. Did, have you heard anything, Ken? Yes, the trailers that were on the site that uh, were unregistered have been taken off of the uh, off the site, so that there's no more than one unregistered trailer on per uh, lot. So that's good news. So it's my goal, my hope is that come springtime that we have an agreed to. Uh, implementation plan between David and Mr. Clemmy on um, trying to recover that that land. Uh, you think we're on track for that? Yeah, Dave uh, has pointed out to me that he doesn't have any um, authority to uh, force anything until uh, it gets uh, the deadline of May 15th. If it's uh, uh, the way it's the, the special permit is set up, but he'll proceed with um, contact with the Clemmies to uh, look at uh, uh, ways that they can uh, improve the property to uh, meet the uh, the, the uh, conditions of the special permit. Okay, good. I, it's good to see a little progress being made. I appreciate it. I have nothing else, George. Would anyone care to make a motion? A motion to uh, adjourn the meeting. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Anything else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, meeting adjourned at uh, 8 16. Good meeting. Thank you, tonight. everyone. Have a good night. Night, all. Night. 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 night.